Hey there, welcome to Garage Time. Today I'm gonna assemble the gas pedal and connect it to the engine, hopefully. Garage Time. This sounds like a simple task, but you'll be shocked at how many components go between your foot and the engine on a gas pedal linkage pull rod assembly. I collected a lot of the pieces, but I'm gonna have to make a few of them today as well. There are three major adjustment points on the linkage rod. First being the pedal itself and then the bell crank assembly near the pedal assembly. Then there's a bell crank on the transaxle, another bell crank on the back of the fan shroud for the 912 engine, and then it goes to the cross rod down to the carburetors. Those are adjustable as well. Finding the components was a challenge. This is the rod that goes, there's two of them. This is, these are the rods that go between the transaxle and the back of the fan shroud. And I believe this one is for my 356. I'm not gonna use it. And then this one is a 912 one or a 911 one. It is really the same thing. It's just got a straight rod as opposed to this part here which goes over the axle in the 356. Both of them are about the same length. I did get a few new parts. This is the, the coupler assembly. It's a rubber isolated thing that I think takes a little bit of vibration out of the gas pedal. This is the rubber boot that seals the accelerator rod inside the tunnel. And then inside the tunnel, there are these bushings. There's three of these that actually guide the accelerator rod in the tunnel. There is no sheathing on the accelerator rod. It's just a simple piece of metal, but it does slide within these bushings. So these get clamped in the tunnel. So what I need to do now is make that long accelerator pull rod that goes through the tunnel and through these bushings. Okay, here on the bench, this is a generic rod from McMaster Cars, 5 30 seconds diameter. And the bushings from URO are a little bit oversized. I mean, I think that's fine. This rod is so flexible when it's in the tunnel, you just wanna keep it from banging around and flexing too much in the tunnel. So this is really just a guide. It'll get a little lubrication. And then I need to add this threaded rod to the end of the solid rod. This is the five millimeter thread that goes in each of the sockets and the couplers. So I couldn't find a Porsche rod or used one for less than a hundred bucks. Plus it's really difficult to ship these things. That's why I'm making my own. This rod was about $7. Okay, to join these two together so they don't break in the future, I found this roll pin that sort of fits over this rod here. And I just need to expand the pin a little bit so it'll fit over the threaded portion. The threaded portion is bigger than this portion. That's why I didn't try just to thread this because it, it's, its diameter is too small. I split the roll pin trying to open up the end. It's just the wrong steel, it's too high strength. So I need to find some low strength steel that I can create a little buffer between the two rods and then do a weld in the middle. So let me look for some new material. Yeah, I had a little diversion there to the workshop to make these couplers. This was a little different than what I expected to do, but I think this is better. Okay, here's the game plan on this piece. I drilled a hole through the entire part and threaded one end. So this threaded rod is gonna go deep into here. And then I ground a little um, moon out of it so I can attach this permanently with the welder. So I'll just fill this up with weld. It'll melt these two pieces together far from the end. And then the same thing on this side. I'm gonna put the smooth rod on this section. It's a smaller diameter. Hammer it in and then weld it in these two areas that are far from the end. That way there, the weld isn't gonna fatigue the metal or cause it to crack or anything later on. The factory on these parts did some brazing like right here. 
they did the same kind of thing where you have a piece of metal and then they braze the end. Um, brazing is good. I'm not really set up for brazing, so I'm just going to do the TIG welding a little further back. Just need to hammer that through. All right, I got this pushed all the way in. Now you can see these little windows here expose the metal rod below. So I'm just going to melt that all together now. And here's a picture of those little windows welded up. And then this rod can still remain nice and flexible. The nice thing about brazing is it puts a little fillet here on the end, which is definitely a good idea, but I don't think this is gonna break ever. Okay, that's about in the center of its adjustment range. This side will go on the pedal, I guess. And I opted for these balls that have the uh, locking pin. There's a little, uh, a little pin that goes in there and prevents this from falling off. So if you step on the gas too hard, you don't just pop the ball socket off. I think that's important on this end. I think all the other ends are, are, are not that bad, but um, anyways, this was available from, I think, Sierra Madre. Okay, both ends are done now, but I'm not gonna weld it until I fit it in the car. This is one inch longer than what I think it should be. I cut it at 61 inches from threaded end to threaded end. And by the time I put the ball cup on, it's going to be much longer than that. So we'll have to see if this is indeed too long, but I suspect it will be. Let's go fit it to the car. Here's the underside of the car and the area that we're going to be working with. This is the bell crank that's part of the transaxle. There's a hole right back there. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, that's where the throttle rod goes. My finger's kind of on it right there. You can look at it from the side. This one right here is where the throttle rod goes. So it's really a connection between this pivot and the pivot on the pedal box. So I'm hoping to be able to just snake this through there. The transmission doesn't seem to be in the way, but something inside the tunnel is. There we go. All right. And that part's in. Now I need to go inside the car and just double check that it's going through the right hangers and connect it with the pedal. So I'm gonna move the camera, probably lower the car down so I can climb in. Okay, I can climb in here now. And there's the throttle rod, kinda of hear it wiggling. And then the first hanger is right here. This is the old bushing. It was sort of intact, but the minute I tried to you know, pull it out, it just fell apart. So if your car has the same problem, I mean, you might wanna change out these bushings. Yeah, I think what happened is the rod just went right under the bracket that holds the bushing. So I don't know if I could get that opened up. Might be easier just to pull the rod out. I don't know if you can see right here, I'll show you guys in a second, but this is the second one. There's no existing bushing in that one at all. But I was able to back it up and get it to go through the first hoop. Now that's the second hoop. And then there's the third hoop right there. And we're going all the way to the front pedal. This is the throttle rod, and it's just loose here on the end. But this is the hanger, a little hard to see right there is the first hanger. This I think is the clutch cable, but you can see it kind of going through there. And then this one is the second hanger. And 
no bushing in there at all. And then this one is the third. So you see that's the throttle rod and then here's the, the bushing holder right there. And then from there, the front just goes right to the pedal. Yeah, I was just able to snap the ball from the other side of the car. So you can see now that lever is moving when I move the rod. So now it's time to attach the pedal. Also right here, there's a little divider. This is the fuel line and behind that is the throttle rod. So I had it on the wrong side of that, that little divider. So now everything fits really nice. See the, the rod is very flexible, but I think once we put this bushing in here, it'll really support it much better. Oh, and then to snap the ball on, I just taped some electrical tape on the end of my needle nose pliers, and that was able to get it on there without scratching any of the plating. Okay, I got the pedal connected. So now you can see it operates up and down like so and I did have to change the geometry a little bit on that push rod because the pedal height is a little higher than I expected mostly because there's a depression in the floor and I didn't take that into account when I cut the little little clearance piece in the in the pedal box so if you can you can kind of barely see there's a shiny portion I had to grind it just a little bit with my die grinder so everything is is now clearing just fine so I'm going to put the uh, bushings in now and see how we do see the rod in there now it's just really helps that that rod glide around see the pedals moving all the way so it really feels nice right now no lubrication on it yet but it's just holding it there for me okay underneath here you can see the rod end is is right there right above the transmission support. So this doesn't actually get the rod end on here. So it looks like it's supposed to contact this, it's too short. But in actuality, there is the rubber coupler and then there's a short rod that goes between the coupler and then this hinge point here. So I'm gonna put this rubber boot on also from URO. So it does look really long. I think everything's threaded in all the way too. So what I'll do at this point, um, I don't want to guess at the length. I will cut the rod, but before I do that, I kind of want to work from both sides and then find out what the rod length should be right here. And now it's time for this coat hanger kind of thing. And it goes here on the bell crank. Yeah. Show you what's going on down here. This is the pull rod from the transmission bell crank. It's called the coat hanger. And then back on the fan shroud, I think you can see that. Right up there is, is where this connects. And I did adjust that. There's a dimension in the workshop manual, 50 millimeters from the ball socket that's closest to me to the back of the fan shroud. And you know, this is a lot easier without the tin in place, so I'm kind of setting it up right now. And then this portion, I would, I have this, this rod right here, this one, I have it as short as possible. Um, I would like this to be a little bit further this way, or actually a little bit further this way, so that when it arcs, it's going to have the same angle each way. But this is as short as I can make it, so this might be too long of a rod, I'm not sure. But I'm going to see what happens if I use it. So now it's time to connect this to this. I just had the idea to take some of that all thread that I had and just make a shorter arm, shorter by about an inch and a half. So let's see how that works. That way there I can try it first and then cut the actual rod. Yeah, so this coupler is a little too far towards the rear of the car, but that's only because this rod's too short. So let's just see how the gas pedal operates.
I think we popped off the ball. Okay, none of the ball sockets came off. What ended up happening is the sleeve that I made for the new rod, I forgot it wasn't welded, so it just came disconnected. But everything else felt pretty good. So I'm gonna measure the length that I shortened this all thread and shorten the tunnel rod the same amount. And um, hopefully that's gonna give us enough room for adjustment. Feels like that might be full throttle right there. I just went back and looked at that video real quick and saw that when I was pushing the gas pedal, it felt like it was coming to a stop. I don't know if that's the bell crank running out of travel. Looks like the fan shroud because it's not even mounted to anything. The fan shroud is kind of flexing and bending, which is typically not the case. I'm not going to run the engine uh, anymore until I get all the cooling tin back on it. So that will be fixed at that time. So the linkage is, I think, done. It's going to probably require a little bit more fine tuning and adjustment, especially after I take the fan shroud off and put the, the better cooling tin on. I've been working on painting some cooling tin a little bit day by day. So now we can cross off accelerator cable. That one turned out to be harder than I thought. 